California has one of the most hydrologically altered landscapes in the world. Through extensive engineering projects, we've turned an arid terrain into a uniquely productive state. But the reality remains, there never seems to be enough water. Over the past century, five intense droughts have slammed California. The last one ended in 2019, and in 2021, we entered another. So why do we always seem to be in or on the brink of drought? The answer lies in where and how California gets its water. There are two main sources of H2O, surface water like rain and snow, and groundwater. The state holds its breath every winter, hoping for a rainy season to replenish its supplies. Moisture-rich atmospheric rivers, or thick bands of water vapor that bring plentiful showers, are essential sources of hydration. Too few and were mired in drought. Too many, though, and were flooded. Precipitation whiplash, or sudden shifts from very dry to very wet conditions, can create disastrous mudslides. This is a very real risk, especially given that half of Southern California's rain can fall in less than 40 hours. Then there's snow, which conveniently falls in solid form across the Sierras. Snow supplies about 30% of California's water once it melts. But snow is as variable as rain. A light season spells a small snowpack and a snow drought, not to mention a bad ski season. And premature melting means the snow won't be there later in the year when we need it. Beneath the surface, California's aquifers, big pockets of rock, hold the state's groundwater supply. That water is pumped up through wells, and it makes up around 40% of California's annual water usage. However, it's a finite source. Drilling deeper and deeper, a mostly unregulated practice that has only recently seen some controls, has awful geologic consequences. With each drop of water drawn out, the ground sinks and compacts, a process known as subsidence, which has caused entire cities to sink in the Central Valley. How much water you have steady access to depends on where you are in the state. Half of our developed water supply, or water that can be managed and guided by us, doesn't go straight into our faucets. It instead flows through streams, rivers, and canals, where it does what water does when it's in its natural environment. Helping plants grow, serving as habitat for fish and fowl, and hydrating ecosystems before evaporating back into the water cycle or flowing into the ocean. Of the other half, 80% waters acres of almonds, grapes, and other California crops, and around 20% travels to cities for human use. About three quarters of our rain and snow falls in Northern California, and a significant amount goes straight back into the environment because it falls in remote, less densely populated areas. And of course, urban areas like the San Francisco Bay Area take their share. But a lot of water demand comes from the more populated, much drier Southern California. This geographic problem is why we've invested in massive water infrastructure. California's water system tries to organize the finite storage of our aquifers and the shrinking seasonal capacity of our snowpack to control the fate of our hydration. The California State Water Project, which spans the entire state, began operation in 1960 and is the largest water transfer system in the world. It includes the 444-mile-long California Aqueduct and other canals and waterways, as well as 1,500 reservoirs. The project transfers 650 million gallons of water daily across the state and has a total capacity in wet years of almost 2 trillion gallons. But even siphoning northern water isn't enough to quench SoCal's thirst. There's another federally managed water schlepping enterprise called the Central Valley Project. And we even get water from out of state through the Colorado River Aqueduct. All of this water management has allowed California to water acres of crops, support huge metropolises, and nurture innovative industries. But one reason we feel like we're in perpetual drought is that our system is finely balanced. All of California's growth and success has huge hydration needs, and any decrease in water supply is felt keenly. 
It could mean less agriculture, fewer green lawns, and less of everything we become accustomed to. California is drinking borrowed water and maybe growing on borrowed time. As the climate emergency continues, drought will continue to be a constant threat. This story was reported and produced by Katherine Schock and directed and animated by Kelly Heiger with graphic design by Rebecca Cow. I'm Ezra David Romero for KQED Newsroom.